Hello, this is the week eight psychology of climate change part one unit four psychology of climate change mini lecture for Psi 333 psychology of disasters and climate change at University of Maine at Augusta. So we have a good sense now of what's happening to our physical systems with climate change. And uh, connecting this to our previous work in the psychology of disasters, you probably already have a fair sense of some of the psychological impacts uh, to the individual, community, and societal level functioning, and particularly with the increase of disasters that we can expect to see with climate change. However, in these final three units, um, we are going to explore more in depth the psychology involved with climate change. And this includes not just our psychological experience or understanding of impacts, uh, but also other psychological functioning. Uh, this includes our perception, our understanding, our sense of identity and self, uh, worldviews and decision making, and all of the other uh, psychological issues that are going on in our brains while we are thinking about and perceiving issues going, uh, going around in our society. Um, our first introduction to the broader psychology of climate change is the book on the psychology of climate change. The American Psychological Association, or APA, convened a task force some years back, uh, number one, to explore what it is that psychologists already know about the psychological interactions with climate change kind of creating a synthesis document of previous research, uh, but also number two, to identify uh, key research questions and areas for study in which psychology is particularly suited to support the uh, response to climate change. A draft report of this document was released in 2009, and this full report book that you have here is, was published in 2010. So as I've said before, uh, this is a pretty new field of study. Uh, we draw from other social sciences, as well as from other research uh, from environmental psychology, social psychology, mental health, or clinical psychology, in order to create a more robust base of research and knowledge, since we can't solely draw from research that is being conducted specifically within the psychology of climate change, or at least in order to have a very robust look at the history of our field. I am currently participating in an interdivisional uh, working group of the APA to explore policy contributions from psychology, from the psychology of climate change specifically, um, at multiple socio-ecological levels. And this means supporting individuals, communities, nations, and even global policies addressing climate change. Uh, in this working group is Janet Swim, who is the lead author for this book that you're reading this week, as well as another author, Susan Clayton, who I had the honor of presenting our working model with at the APA convention this year in Toronto. Uh, we also have community psychologists. I'm a community psychologist from the APA Division 27, uh, the Society for Community Research and Action, as well as psychologists from Division 9 which is SPICI, uh, the Society for Psychological Study of Social Issues, and again with other psychologists who are focusing on the environment, on policy, on uh, social justice, on basically every other psychosocial issue that interacts with climate change. Uh, so those of you who are thinking about moving forward in this field, it is growing and uh, there are many opportunities that are available to become involved. This week, I want you to read the introduction and the summary and discussion because those two chapters will give you a very good overview of our field, psychology of climate change. Um, and it will cover a lot of the knowledge that we have, give a good introduction to that, as well as the directions for psychological research and activities and contributions within um, all of our social response to climate change. I would, of course, recommend that you read the entire book. It's honestly fascinating, it's interesting, uh, and it's very well written in a very accessible language to uh, experts as well as to those who are new within this field. Um, but recognizing the time constraints that we have in the lives of our students, I will instead have you choose two other chapters uh, based on your line of interest in research. 
Um, each chapter addresses a broad research question and an exploration of the types of psychological research and activities that have gone into this question and or future research directions that we can explore as we move forward as a field. Uh, these six questions are, and each chapter again covers each of these uh, questions, uh, number one, how do people understand the risks imposed by climate change? So again, getting even into the basic uh, psychological processing of information, but also our contextual worldview of understanding what is happening within our world. Uh, number two, what are the human behavioral contributions to climate change and the psychological and contextual drivers of these contributions? This does start to get into behavioral psychology, which we have a very long base of, as well as our judgment and decision making and why it is that we do what we do um, as, as human beings. Number three, what are the psychosocial impacts of climate change? And here, this is going to overlap a lot with the types of considerations that we have explored with the psychology of disasters, particularly since we have been looking at a lot of the, those psychosocial interactions within individuals, communities, and broader societies, uh, preparing for and responding to disasters. Number four, um, how do people adapt to and cope with perceived threat and unfolding impacts of climate change. This starts to get into mental health and well-being issues, particularly when we are uh, living and existing within a, uh, a the ambient stress, knowing that, or that climate change is happening and knowing that uh, we must contend with it or we are not contending with it or whatever else. Um, and number five, what psycho psychological barriers limit uh, climate change action? There was a great article that was written on this later on called the, Bear the Dragons of Inaction. So basically these issues that get in the way of us actually doing what uh, we, or at least some of us know that we must do, uh, it's not always quite so easy to take all of the steps uh, to actually make an effect change. Sometimes uh, we are actively impeded from doing it, but also sometimes we take token steps that we feel are much more effective than they actually are. But, okay, I'm done, I've done what I can, and so don't take the steps that aren't necessarily going to help affect positive change. And then finally, number six, how can psychologists assist in limiting climate change? So this does look into more uh, policy and research directions for psychologists particularly. Um, as a first analysis of the field of the psychology of climate change, there are certainly gaps in our knowledge and even in our questions that we are asking regarding the interactions between psychology and climate change. However, this book is not meant to be the end all be all of our knowledge within this field. Um, this is rather a good solid starting point. This was a process put together by a number of psychologists to look at what do we know and where can we move forward from here. Um, since this report was released, the American Psychologist, uh, as well as the American Journal for Community Psychology, have both had special issues focusing on climate change. There has been a number of reports coming out. There are um, uh, presentations at our national and international conferences. There's a lot of work that is being done in this field, so it is continuing to, to grow. As I mentioned before, there are a lot of different uh, research activities that are happening in different subfields of psychology. Um, it's also becoming much more standard within climate change research institutes to have a psychology or a social science team that is working alongside other climate scientists, meteorologists and climatologists and hydrologists and the like, because more and more researchers are recognizing that while climate change occurs in our natural systems, um, it's a human problem. So this week for our class activities, I am still waiting for IRB approval for research, so we are still on hold with the surveys and with the workshops. Um, however, if you would like to discuss your interviews um, as you're preparing for them and conducting them and then, you know, analyzing the results and uh, what you get from them, please contact me. I'm very happy to meet with you in person or by phone, Google Hangouts, etc., uh, to help you prepare for the research or for your interviews or to talk through any particular question you might have about what you can look for or um, where you can go with the knowledge that you're gathering. So please let me know. I am always here if you would like to talk.
Thank you.